In this video I fabricate in aluminium the parts that were previously 3D printed and do some improvements and go for a ride. So let's work on a fundamental improvement first. I noticed in the 3D printed version that the limit for tilting was the lower wishbone touching the knuckle there. So the solution is to change the shape of the wishbone. The mechanical geometry is exactly the same as if it was straight. It just doesn't hit there. All right, let's start by making this component here for the steering knuckle. So I got a major upgrade to my prototyping capabilities. For a long time I used the CNC machine that I made and it was super useful, but not super accurate. And it was a lot of work setting it up and I uh, had to monitor it for safety and so on. So now I got a Carvera Air from Make Era. This is a true game changer. They have their own CAM software, which makes it pretty easy to turn a part drawing into a machining process and have super accurate positioning and tools for auto leveling. The cutting is so smooth that it doesn't even get warm. Uh, if you look at it, the part is much colder than my finger there. It's just cutting so smoothly. Actually, the noisiest thing in my current setup is the vacuum cleaner, which uh, actually makes a great job. With this adapter, I connect my household vacuum cleaner to the machine, and there are barely any aluminium shavings inside of the machine. Also, it's good to have a vacuum cleaner to force air uh, through the cutting tool and helping keeping it cold. This took 20 minutes to make. That's less than my 3D printer would take to make it in plastic. This machine also comes with a fourth axis and a laser module that I haven't tried yet. I'm gonna show you in future videos. Uh, Makeera offered this machine and I couldn't be more thankful. Please check out the link to their website in the description if you're considering a desktop CNC machine for your prototyping arsenal. Let's go! Yeah, first I have to take those tabs out, cut them. I think I made them a little bit thick, but that's all right. And then give it a sand to make it smooth. Yeah, it's pretty good. Then let's make this part that is in between those plates and holds the axle. I just marked it in the CNC machine because I didn't have a deep enough mill bit. Just finish it in the workshop with the drill. Then I remove the previous parts that were 3D printed from the trike. And this is the tube that I'm gonna assemble the new steering on. This tube is one millimeter wider than the frame. And now let's make these parts that are assembled in the tube and then we'll secure the wishbones. Yeah, I'll make it in the CNC machine again. They just 
yeah, they just they're not great. I put everything together and well. So, but I decided to go with these universal joints on this side. I've been meaning to try them because, you know, just to see if they, I can get a bigger angle. So I put the left arm with universal joints and leave the right arm with the ball joints and uh, go for a ride just to see if that works. And, uh, you know, the steering does work. Everything works fine, but on the like high end of turning, it uh, feels a little bit heavy when it's going far. So I think the ball joints are just better. So I put them back in and now it's super smooth. What I'm gonna do now is uh, show you in detail each bit of the mechanical aspects so that uh, you see functioning uh, each of the components that were that was built
final remarks about this build. I like very much how the wishbones are secured into the frame. These 10 millimeter plates are easy to make now with the CNC machine and uh, just weld there to the tube, fit the tube. So I like this very much and also it feels very solid. So that's good. Uh, on the downside, there are two things. One is, well, it just doesn't turn enough. And that means these ball joints in this orientation are just uh, not enough for turning. So I'm considering, well, for now, I'll just put the other ball joints that allow to turn more in the other sense. But I'm considering making a knuckle with two degrees of freedom and maybe with bearing for, you know, tilting and another bearing for turning. But uh, yeah, well, the other thing is that at low speeds, and uh, I really appreciate your help with this if you have some tips. At low speeds, I have to compensate the steering a lot. So I always have to be moving the steering. And also, I cannot ride with no hands at low speed. So what I'm thinking is that I can improve that with trail. So I have a caster angle of um, 15 degrees now, and uh, this results in a trail of uh, about 67 millimeters, which uh, sounds all right. But I think I can improve the steering being stable at both speeds by changing trail. So the question that I have for you is, should I move the wheel backwards in relationship to the steering and increase the trail? Or should I move it forward? And with the moving forward, um, I got a, another context, which is I just been in India some time ago, and I noticed these delta drags, which such a forward trail, it's just so much. Do you know why these, why they use so much forward trail? Share your knowledge with us. See me next time.